Namaskar my dear students. Today in the quick review section, we will be discussing the clinical step of making primary impression in the fabrication of complete denture. It is a very important step. Uh, we will be discussing the theory as well as the clinical aspect of this topic. As this is one of the clinical exercise in the practical exam during the final year, so we will be discussing all the questions related to this topic which are due, asked during the chairside viva. So let's begin. What is a preliminary or a primary impression? Before this, what is a dental impression? It is the negative imprint of the hard and the soft tissues present in the mouth from which a positive reproduction can be formed. Now the preliminary or the primary impression in complete denture is the impression which is made for the purpose of diagnosis to see what is present in the mouth or for the construction of the special tree for making the final impression. Upper or lower impressions which should be made first? This is a very common question which comes to our mind and it is often asked by the examiner also that which impression you should make first. So the answer is the lower impressions are preferably made first. Why? For the following reasons. First, it helps in gaining the confidence of the patient because it does not cause much discomfort. The lower causes less discomfort as compared to the upper. Why? Because if the upper impression is made first, what will happen? It will cause gag reflex and it can make the patient uncooperative. The result will be that he will not allow proceeding with the impression procedure. And third reason is that insertion of the tree, you know, insertion of any foreign body, it causes increased salivation. So, this can make the impression procedure difficult. If we are making the upper impression first, what will happen? The floor of the mouth will be pulled with the saliva and it will be difficult to make the lower impression afterwards. So we will make the lower impressions first. Materials which are used for making the primary impression. Three common materials which are used are first is the impression compound, second is the alginate and third is the addition silicon in the putty form. Now if we talk about the impression compound, we all know that it is a highly viscous material that has body. So it can compensate for any under extension of the structure and we can get a good impression. Okay, second, it is reversible material. It is a thermoplastic material. So addition can be done in deficient areas. But certain disadvantages of impression compound that first, because of its high viscosity, it records poor surface details. And second, because it is a rigid material, so it cannot be used in undercut areas. Third, patient is more prone to injury due to the heating of the material. Second is the alginate. Alginate is the most common material which is used. It records the details accurately. It is a hygienic material and we can get a snap and quick impression with the alginate. But the disadvantage is that it is poor in dimensional stability. It can also distort if it is not supported by the borders of the tray. So we need to build up the borders with wax or the um, compound before making the impression with the alginate. Third, no additions or corrections can be made with the alginate as we were able to do with the impression compound. Third is the addition silicon in the putty form. It also has body so it can compensate for any under extension of the stock tray. Second, snap quick impression can be made with this. It is an elastic material, so undercuts can be recorded. It is one of the big advantage of the addition silicon. Then uh, disadvantage, because it has high viscosity, so again, the surface details will not be that good. It cannot be added if it is deficient. And third, the most common reason is that we are not using it is that it is very expensive. 
three things are important while making the impression first is the chair position how we have uh, adjusted the chair while making the impression second is the patient position how the patient is sitting and third is the operator position where we are standing while making the impression if we talk about the chair position for the lower impression the patient's lower jaw it should be at the level of the clinician's shoulder okay and for the maxillary or the upper impression the patient's upper jaw should be at the level of the clinician's elbow we can see in the picture also then the patient position very important patient should be seated in the upright position and comfortable position with the occiput resting firmly in the headrest okay it should not be unsupported third is the operator position that is the clinician's position for the maxillary impression we will always stand at the back of the patient we also call it 11 o'clock position okay and for the mandibular impression we always stand in the front of the patient on the side that is the 7 o'clock position these positions are often asked during the chair side viva tray selection very very important for a good impression your tray should be accurate now first for the maxillary impression you know the tray should cover the entire denture bearing area and it, it should extend up to the reflection of the mucosa okay it should uh, allow at least 5 to 6 mm or 1/4 inch of the space between the sides of the tray and the ridge now how to do that it should be larger than the outward of the residual ridges okay now what we can do the lateral of the tuberosity of one side to the other side it can be measured and then the tray is measured as we can see in the picture okay now how to check the extension of the tray in the mouth tray is placed in the mouth it is positioned by centering the labial notch of the tray over the labial frenum then the posterior extent of the tray relative to the posterior palatal seal it is maintained and then the handle is dropped downward to permit the visual inspection posteriorly as we can see in the picture first anteriorly we will check then the posterior part we will check the tray must include both the hamular notches and the vibrating line so that means our tray is accurate now the tray selection for the mandibular or the lower impression posteriorly the tray should cover the retromolar pads and anteriorly the tray is raised for the observation of the relation between the lingual flange and the lingual slope of the lower ridge you know there must be again space between the ridge and the tray then only we can get the uh, good impression now let us know the steps of making the impression with the impression compound first is the armentarium we need to have a compound bath we have we need a hard bowl wax knife compound knife and a bp blade now comes the manipulation of the material for this the material required for the upper impression 3/4 of the compound cake is sufficient and for the lower impression half cake is sufficient now this is for the general ridge size it will depend on the ridge size also now for, then we will break the impression compound into pieces and we will put it into the uh, water bath uh, at the temperature 60 to 70 degree celsius or 140 degree fahrenheit or else we can take the warm water in a bowl also if we don't have a compound bath now to check that the temperature of the uh, warm water is fine it should not stick to the gloves okay it should not stick to the fingers that if it is sticking that means the water is too hot then after 5 minutes the material is removed from the bath and it is kneaded nicely why we are big, uh, putting the impression compound into pieces because the thermal conductivity of the impression compound is very low so for the uniform softness the reason of kneading why we need we need to knead the impression compound so that it increases the plasticity of the material and it increases the softness okay 
Now the procedure is repeated until the material has acquired a uniform softness throughout. Next is the loading of the material and placing in the mouth. Material is loaded on the tray. Uh, how it will be loaded? That sufficient bulk. It is extended beyond the flanges. As we can see in the picture, we need a slightly overextended impression because we need to fabricate the special tray on it. Okay. Then the impression compound, it is molded with a finger to form the ridge groove, alveolar groove. Then it is slightly raised in the upper impression. It is raised in the middle part of the palate and the distolingual flange is slightly raised in the lower impression. Once the material it is adapted to the tray, the surface is slightly flamed or it is tempered in the water bath and then it is inserted into the mouth. Okay, now why this is done? Because the coefficient of thermal expansion of impression compound is high. You know, you need to know the properties of the impression compound. For this, I have also enclosed the video. Please go through that because examiner usually asks about the material which you are using. Okay, then the tray, it is centered on the ridge. The tray orientation is such that the handle, it should coincide with the facial midline. Okay, now there is no need for tray adhesive because the impression compound, it contains the resins and the waxes. So it is sticky in nature. It will adhere to the tray. Now, once the impression is loaded and it is placed into the mouth, then we will do the movements. Movements for the upper impression. First, the movement of the lip outward, downward and inward. This will record the labial frenum and the labial flange. Second, the movement of the cheek, outward, downward, inward, forward and the backward. This will record the buccal frenum and the buccal flange area. Then wide opening of the mouth and the side to side movement of the mandible. Okay, this will record the disto buccal flange. Then the patient is asked to say aha. This will record the posterior palatal seal area. Now the movements of the uh, for the lower impression, movements of the lower lip that is outward, upward and inward. This will record the labial frenum and the labial flange area. Then outward, then the movements of the cheek, outward, upward, inward, backward and the forward. This will record the buccal frenum and the buccal flange area. Now the patient is asked to do certain tongue movements. Patient is asked to uh, protrude the tip of the tongue, then touch the palate and move it from side to side. Protrusion and touching the palate, it will record the interior lingual flange and the side to side movements of the tongue, it will uh, record the middle and the posterior part of the lingual flange. Then the patient is asked to open the mouth wide and then close the mouth against resistance. Okay, this will record the distal flange of the lower part. Then we will uh, remove the impressions from the patient mouth and we will inspect the inspect, uh, impressions for any errors. You know, this is the advantage of impression compound that if there is any deficient area, uh, we can add the impression compound and we can correct it in the mouth also. Uh, no need to make a new impression. Now, next is the impression making with the alginate. Okay, alginate is a very common material which is used in dentistry. Uh, for the armentarium required is the bowel, spatula, the alginate powder and the perforated edentulous trays. Now there is a disadvantage of alginate that it will not that it does not support itself from the uh, confines of the tray. So the tray needs to be built up. If there is any under extension that has to be corrected uh, with the help of soft boxing wax or impression compound can also be used to build the flanges. After the buildup, the powder and the liquid, they are thoroughly incorporated by the rotary motion of the flat spatula against the sides of the bowel. Then a small amount of alginate, it is placed in the interior part of the palate and in the sulci opposite to the tuberosity. You know, these are the undercut areas, so it will prevent any air entrapment in these parts of the impression. The tray is then positioned carefully as we have discussed earlier. 
the movements are done respective to the upper and lower impression as we have discussed with the impression compound. Once the material is set, the cheek and the lip, they are lifted up to release the air between the soft tissue at the reflection and the border of the tray. And in a snap, the impression is removed. After it is removed, the impression is inspected for any kind of errors. If there is any deficient areas, we will have to make a new impression. It cannot be corrected. Common mistakes or the errors which are uh, found in the alginate impressions and need to be corrected are first is the unequal borders. Okay, that is basically because of the improper orientation of the tray. Second, exposure of the tray posteriorly. The tray is exposed, so that means either the improper positioning was there or we have applied excessive pressure in the area. Third, separation from the tray. The alginate is separated, that is because the material it did not set completely. We have uh, removed the impression uh, beforehand only or there was insufficient retention with the tray then entire denture bearing area is not covered. That may be due to the small size of the tray, insufficient anatomical details. So either there was insufficient material or there was failure to adequately trim the or the, do the bottom molding. We have not done the movements nicely. Okay, so if there are uh, some errors, we will have to go for a new impression. Now let us summarize some checkpoints that you will see in the impression. Okay, for the lower impression, the checkpoints are first look at the external oblique ridges, they should be covered. The myelohyde ridges should be covered. Extension should be there to the vestibular reflection. Okay, complete the flanges should not be short. Okay, then labial, buccal, and the lingual. Prenum. They should be recorded. We should be able to see the notches in the impression. Retromolar pads should be covered. Extension into the posterior myelohyde fossa. So that means the distal lingual flange should be nicely recorded. There should be no wrinkles on the impression surface. Okay, the tray flanges, they should not show uh, through the compound. That means the tray should not be exposed. Checkpoints for the upper impression, the alveolar ridge should be completely recorded, okay, till the posterior end. Then the palate should be recorded as far as the vibrating line indicated by the presence of fovea palatini, okay. Then complete extension into the hamular notches. This is again included in the posterior extension. Extension to the vestibular reflection, that means the uh, vestibules, the flanges should be complete okay they should not be short extension into the whole of the tuberosity sulcus that should be complete we are talking about the disto buccal flanges then labial and the buccal frenum they should be completely recorded as notches in the impression you know when we are going for uh, impression, we should first look at the anatomy which is present in the mouth. Then only we can correlate with the impression that we have recorded. With this, we are done with the topic. I am sure now you will be able to make the primary impression and you will be also able to give the viva nicely. Okay, so do not forget to share and like the video. You can also give your topics in the comment section. I will try to cover them in my next videos. Wish you success today and always.